In this humble brown box is a display that promises features that we are seeing in all of these third gen 240 hertz 32 inch 4K QD OLED displays. It's the MSI MAG321 UPX and no, you cannot upgrade the firmware in this and we're gonna see if that's gonna make a difference or not. And spoiler alert, honestly, it doesn't. This thing is awesome and I actually like this minimal black design with no RGB, the small footprint on the stand there, and it has 0 0.03 millisecond gray to gray, 240 hertz. It has three years of OLED warranty from MSI, has all the certifications that you need and want, VESA, Adaptive Sync, all the things, and a wide, wide color gamut, which is really important for all of us creators too. And it has OLED Care 2.0, which detects the taskbar and all the other things that remain static on your screen. It also has gamer specific features. For the ports, you actually have a USB C display port and HDMI for all of your connectivity there. And the OSD on this is actually so easy to use. I, this is actually my favorite OSD of all the monitors I've tested recently. It's very easy to use. And I'll be going back and forth comparing this to this Alienware. The AW3225QF, which I re also reviewed. And in the lower right corner, I'll have a green triangle for this Alienware and a red triangle for the MSI. And looking at Horizon Forbidden West, on the Alienware and then going to the MSI, you can see despite the fact that the Alienware has Dolby Vision and all these other features that are, that are baked in, I really don't see a big difference here between these two displays. They look actually very, very similar and I can't really spot a difference besides the obviously the curved this display of the Alienware. And playing a game like Horizon Forbidden West, you're introduced to crazy amount of contrast. So you're this is this is the type of game that will really utilize the HDR Peak 1000 of these displays. And so looking at the MSI, man, I like actually really like the flat panel look a lot. And I'm going to zoom in a little more here, and you can see. Halo Infinite and let's actually go back to the Alienware and see what that looks like so you can see man they look actually pretty much identical besides the curve as you can see on the Alienware the MSI just it looks so good honestly out of the box there was no fuss at all for me when I set this thing up and started playing some games um, actually it took a little it took a little more time for me to get the Alienware to look good um, and you know you guys have seen that from some of the other reviewers out there and in my experience yeah I mean it looked really good out of the box but the Alienware has been through four firmware updates I believe and so this MSI for it to actually match the Alienware or even in some cases I feel like it beats it sometimes in the HDR quality now the Alienware, if I'm really nitpicking, I can tell that it gets just ever so slightly a touch brighter in some content, but man, it's really split in hairs. It's really hard to tell, honestly. And the Alienware, as you can see here, it's, it's awesome. You can sit there in front of it and see this curved image that's wrapping around you and it's it's quite immersive but the problem with the Alienware is you have to be sitting a little bit closer to it to really appreciate the curved feel and the, that the way the curve makes you feel and so also if you're not used to a curved display you might actually struggle a little bit with this because it might actually make you feel slightly nauseous I have seen reviewers note that or people I've talked to personally that don't like curved displays because at this size you, if you're not used to it it actually could create some slight motion sickness that's something to keep in mind and so comparing these two side by side calibrated on my MacBook Pro here they're uh, they're identical you can't really tell a difference at all in the color fidelity and quality at least I can't looking at the price too side by side 900 bucks for the MSI 
$1,200 for the Alienware, you're saving 300 bucks by getting this display with no RGB, no curve. Yeah, no firmware update, but who cares, man? You're saving 300 bucks, and I think the MSI, in a lot of ways, is just looks more professional, especially for you creators out there that want something black. And by the way, did you know I can connect these two displays to my MacBook Pro with just one cable coming out of my MacBook Pro? And that is thanks to this awesome device from Yoda Master. It's a docking station that allows me to connect two displays into this one docking station. And it also gives me more ports. So I have one cable coming out of the back of my MacBook Pro there. And both of these awesome QD OLED displays are connected to it. And it just allows you the flexibility from Yoda Master here, these docks, to connect multiple items and displays. As you can see, my Mac Pro there has this docking station here. So I'm, I'm plugging in USB peripherals in the front, and an SD card slot is available there, Ethernet. And it just creates this beautiful USB-C workstation with all these ports that are available to you. And I think these are a fantastic addition to any creative space. I highly recommend checking them out. You can use my links below for more info to learn about them. And thanks to Yoda Master for sending these to me to show you guys how to connect two displays through one cable. Calibrating this display using the Calibrite software in the i1 Display Pro, I could see the full color coverage of DCI-P3 and over the over coverage of sRGB and Adobe RGB. And so this thing calibrates superbly well. And so for all you content creators, this display is awesome. I like it better than the Alienware because it's flat. To have a canvas like this, that's this color accurate, and allows you to have 240 hertz as well just creates a seamless smooth experience for UI and UX experiences where you're looking at really dynamic content where things are flowing on the screen and you're interacting with elements within a web space having that 240 hertz along with the highest color accuracy you can get that's almost like reference monitor is is pretty amazing that that we have this technology available now in 2024. It's pretty awesome. Used to have, have to pay a high premium and now I can only, I can just pay $900 and have a display that's 99% DCI-P3. It's 32 inches, it's 4K and it's awesome. And so 140 PPI is the text clarity here. And so you can see this is zoomed in on the screen looking at some of this cool dynamic content. It's crystal clear sharp, it's pretty awesome. So for photography, for content creating, man, to have this canvas be this dead accurate once it's calibrated, which I, I do recommend calibrating it because that'll give you the best experience and um, functionality for graphic design, photography, and video production, you'll be able to get that D65 true color and looking at all of my existing photography and content and some of these things that I've worked on previous projects, they're spot on. They look incredible. And so, man, I think this could become my new daily driver display. Any kind of dynamic fluid content, you're going to have just a great experience knowing that you've got the best color accuracy and 240 hertz. One thing to keep in mind is reflections on QD OLEDs aren't the greatest. As you can see, I've actually got an LED light bar on right behind my laptop, and it is reflecting on that display, as you'll, you'll see in the lower right corner. These QD OLEDs do, unfortunately, suffer from kind of a purple tinge where light is reflected and scattered on the display, causing a kind of a purple grayish hue that is visible in super bright light. So keep that in mind. If you're working in a dark studio or if you're in a dark environment, that is a non-issue. But, but QD OLED technology does suffer from that. So that is something to keep in mind. But I can't say enough about this MSI display. I think the fact that you can't update the firmware on it, 
who cares? I just compared it to this Alienware that's been through four firmware updates, I believe, and I'm finally super happy with the Alienware, and this one basically matches that out of the box. So, so far in my use case, I haven't seen any experience, I haven't experienced anything that would keep me from spending $900 on this display, especially considering that it's actually more available, at least in my experience it was, than the display from Asus and any of the other displays that are available besides Dell. The Dell display, I think they've got truckloads of those. For gaming, you're gonna see amazing HDR performance. What, what else can I say? Horizon Forbidden West, if you're gonna play this game, play it on this MSI display. It's going to look so good and the clarity and the 240 hertz plus the low 0.03 gray to gray response time and the high color gamut mixed with HDR is going to give you the absolute best experience. As you can see, this is not a screenshot or a video capture of any kind. I'm just filming my screen and what I'm seeing. The sun, the clouds, all of the detail is preserved in the shadows and it allows me to experience this game the way it was intended to. Obviously, if you haven't picked up a QD OLED display yet, you don't know what you're missing. And I think for an entry point here to get in at $900 to get in on the QD OLED world at Gen, Gen 3 QD OLED at 240 hertz, it's pretty phenomenal. Hey, thanks everyone for stopping by today for my quick review of this amazing MSI display. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you can, take a moment to subscribe to my channel. That would be amazing. It would help me out. Give me a thumbs up if you like today's content and ring that bell to get notified when I drop new content. And I'll see every one of you on my next video.